Hello, welcome to Explorer Classroom. My name is Vivette Dukes and I'm so glad you are joining us today. Many viewers around the world are celebrating Ramadan. We wish you all a beautiful celebration. Ramadan Mubarak. At National Geographic, we use the power of science, exploration, education, and storytelling to illuminate and protect the wonder of our world. Explorer Classroom connects students worldwide with our National Geographic Explorers for short lessons and time for your questions. That's the best part. Today, our explorer is none other than Diva Amon, a deep sea biologist who studies the weird and wonderful animals living in underwater habitats and the impact that humans have on them. Today, Diva will share how she dedicates her time to marine science, education, and advocacy for this important ecosystem. Before we get into today's lesson, I'd like to welcome our registered viewers who join us from literally around the globe. Special shout outs for today go to Oak Ridge Elementary School, Dakota, Dakota Meadows Middle School, Alpha Alternative School, Mondarok Nat Regional Middle School. I think I messed your name up. Moden Knock Regional Middle School. Want to make sure I get that right. Shout out to you. Jackson Intermediate School, Steam Academy at Woodrow Wilson, and all the home schools out there. Thank you so much for joining us. We're thrilled to have you all here. And with that, let's get this Explorer Classroom started. It's time to turn it over to Diva to share all about deep sea marine life. Take it away, Diva. Thank you so much, Vivette. It's so wonderful to be here. I'm just going to go ahead and share my screen. Just give me a thumbs up if you can that you're seeing the actual slide. Let me move this off. Great. Okay, so I am so excited to be joined by so many of you today for our journey into the depths of the ocean. So as Vivette said, my name is Diva Amon. I'm a Caribbean marine biologist, and I'm currently the director and founder of Species, which is a nonprofit organization here in Trinidad and Tobago, where I'm from. And it's all, I'm also a scientific advisor at the University of California, Santa Barbara. And my research, as Vivette said already, concentrates on trying to answer two basic questions. The first is what lives in our world's deep ocean? And the second is how are we humans impacting it? And let me tell you, there are very few careers that allow you to be amongst the first people on the planet to see a new species, a new habitat, a new behavior, something that we had no idea previously existed before. And that's really special. And so as a deep sea scientist, you know, when I was younger, before I even knew about the deep ocean, I knew that I loved experiencing new things and I wanted to be an explorer, a real life explorer. And as a deep sea biologist, I get the opportunity to do that. And whereas once I just wanted to explore to see new things, now as my career has progressed, I now want to explore to better understand these species and these environments and ultimately work to protect them because I recognize what an absolute privilege it is to work in the ocean and experience the ocean in the way I have and in particular in the deep ocean where so few people get to go. And so I want many more people, including all of you guys, to have that opportunity. So as I said, I'm from Trinidad and Tobago. These are a group of islands down at the bottom of the Caribbean chain. You can see down there in the white circle. And it's basically at the very, very southerly island of the Caribbean chain. You can see Florida up to the top of the, of the map. And it's a really beautiful place with lots of different ocean and habitats, everything from beaches you can see in the top right, the coral reefs down in the bottom left, and to the, my favorite, the deep sea. There is a lot to explore down here. But 
most of my work actually doesn't happen in Trinidad and Tobago. Most of my work is actually done in the deep sea all around the world. And to do this exploration and scientific research, I use some really cool technology. And so this is an example of one of the pieces of equipment that I'm very lucky to use. So this is called the Deep Discoverer. And this is a type one example of a remotely operated vehicle or ROV. And what ROVs are is they are robots that go down into the deep sea for us. We do not go in them. So they're attached to the ship. As you can see on the front of the vehicle, they've got lots of lights and they've got cameras. They've got arms to collect different samples, whether that is deep sea animals or deep sea rocks. And then they've got baskets on the front that we are able to put those samples in to bring them to the surface. Really, they are our ears, our eyes and our hands on the deep sea floor. And now I want to share with you my favorite piece of equipment that I get to use. And I'm going to throw it, ask Andre to open, to show this video for us. And you're going to be able to see this piece of equipment that is really very rare to use, but is just, again, one of the best experiences that one can have. So this, what you can see here on the screen, is called a submersible or a human occupied vehicle or HOV. And this was filmed during in 2017 in an expedition in the middle of the Atlantic Ocean. And as you see, we use them from very, very big ships. And that's because the deep sea is obviously very, is often, sorry, very far from land. And so we spend a lot of time out at sea when we're doing on our expedition, when we're going on our expedition, sometimes weeks to months. And a submersible really is our chariot down into the deep sea. It's the way that we are able to actually get down there and see things with our very own eyes. And as I said, you know, it's a really special piece of equipment to work in this very, very difficult place. Thanks very much, Andre. So. Let's go back to my presentation. Right, so, so when we talk about the deep sea, what are we referring to exactly? Well, the ocean is, the deep sea is everything from about 200 meters depth, which is about 650 feet, all the way to the deepest point on the planet, which is at about 11,000 meters or 36,000 feet. And that's everything that is dark blue on this map that you can see here. And so you can see the deep sea is massive. It actually occupies about 60% of the Earth's surface and provides over 96% of all the habitable space on Earth. So all the space in which life can live. And so that makes the deep sea actually the largest ecosystem by far on planet Earth. And so as you saw from my previous video, you need a lot of high tech equipment to work in the deep sea. And that's because there are such extreme conditions down there. So I want us to play a little quiz. I want you to tell me four of the characteristics of the deep sea. If you were to go down there right now, what would you experience? And so for all the kids and educators joining us on YouTube, please type your answers into the chat box. And for all of our on-screen classrooms, please share your answers with your teacher and get her or him to type it in to the chat box. I'm gonna give you about 20 seconds to type those answers in as much as you can, but I'm looking for four answers. What is it you would experience if you went down there right now? Oop. Okay, I'm seeing some great answers coming through. Yes, I'm seeing one or two that I'm looking for already. Yes, two questions, two answers that I'm looking for. Two out of four. Okay, okay. Seeing three out of four. Great work, guys. I mean, you guys are on it today. I mean, lots of great, great answers coming in. I mean, you guys nearly have all four. So five more seconds, and then I'm going to close it, and we're going to talk about each of those things. These are great answers. Okay, so you guys got most of them. So what I was looking for is that the deep sea is 
dark. So once you get past about 1300 feet or 400 meters, it is too deep for sunlight to penetrate. And so that means that we can only see as far as the lights on equipment allow us. So in this photo, for instance, of this beautiful deep sea sponge, we you can see that in the distance, it's just dark out there. And we can only see as far as our lights let us. But amazingly, that doesn't mean that there isn't light in the deep sea. There's just no sunlight. In fact, lots of animals, which some people put in the chat, are able to create their own light via bioluminescence. I was also looking for cold, which many of you said. So it is just above freezing in the deep sea, but that's not a problem for most of the animals that live down here like this Dr. Dumbo octopus. And so for the third answer, which most of you got, I'm gonna again ask Andre to roll this clip for us. Andre, if you would be so kind. So we do this really cool thing when we're at sea where we attach a styrofoam cup we decorate them, and then we attach these styrofoam cups to our pieces of equipment, and then we send them down into the deep sea. And so if you think the deep sea has all of this water above it that weighs a lot, it's a big mass. And so that as the equipment goes lower, deeper and deeper, it squeezes the cup, and the cup begins to shrink, and all the air leaves that styrofoam cup. And by the time this piece of equipment has returned to the surface with the styrofoam cup, that styrofoam cup is about the size of a large thimble or sort of like a, a shot glass, if you will. So really, really little. And this is one of the souvenirs we take home when we're leaving deep sea expeditions. Thank you, Andre, that's great. And so you guys got three out of four. The last one that I was looking for, which is definitely the hardest, is that the deep sea is really unexplored. And that's just because it's such a tough place to work. You need really expensive equipment. And it means that not a lot of people are able to do it. So to show you how just ex poorly explored, we have better maps of the moon, Mars, and Venus than we do our own ocean floor. And in fact, more than 99% of the deep sea has never been seen by human eyes or with a camera. Think about that. Like we've never seen more than 99% of the deep sea. And that means that for most of the deep sea, which is most of the planet, we can't answer this really basic question of what lives there. Much less questions about, well, what, does this, what do the species that live there eat? How do they reproduce? How old do they live to? What role do they play in the ecosystem? And so this is why at the beginning I said to be a deep sea scientist is really to be a real life explorer because you are going to places that no one has ever been before and answering questions that no one has ever answered before. And but, you know, the improvements to technology are revealing that the deep sea is not this big, dark, cold, boring, empty place. In fact, it's just like on land, and there are a variety of different habitats down in the deep sea. So there's everything from coral gardens, which you can see in the top left. In fact, there are more species of coral in the deep sea than in shallow waters, which not a lot of people realize. Then if we look in the top right, there are actually lakes at the bottom of the deep sea. I know that sounds weird, right? Like lakes in the ocean, what? But actually what it is, is there are lakes on the seafloor made of brine. And brine is seawater that is three to eight times saltier than normal seawater. And because it's saltier, it's heavier. And it means it sits on the seafloor and forms this lake-like environment. And this is one that we discovered on an expedition I led in the Gulf of Mexico. And then in the bottom left, we have, there are sea mounts. And these are mountains, entire mountains under the sea. And this is a particularly special one because these purple things you can see here are actually mother octopus. And in this particular area found off Costa Rica, there are all of these mother octopus sitting with their eggs all in one place, thousands and thousands of them. And that was only discovered just a few years ago. And actually, we'll be going back there in June, which I'd love to tell you about in the question and answer uh, session. 
And then in addition to that, there are food bowls, there are canyons, there are coal seeps, there are trenches. There is just a huge amount of habitats in the deep sea. And because of that huge variety of habitats, it means that there is really high biodiversity, a really high number of species that live in the deep sea. And so it's thought that there are likely about a million species that live in the ocean, most of them in the deep sea, and actually about two thirds of them still have not yet been discovered. There's a lot of work to do. And the new technology we're using is also allowing us to see species in ways we never have before. So the bottom right image is from some colleagues that used low light cameras to show us the sea cucumber creating its amazing bioluminescent display, creating these rhythmic light patterns you can see on it. And most of the one of the common traits of animals in the deep sea is that life is really slow. So there's not a lot of food in the deep sea and it means that animals conserve the energy. So think about it, if you were hungry, you're not gonna go run a marathon, right? So animals move slowly, they grow slowly, they reproduce slowly, and they take a long time to become mature. So to give you some examples, the Greenland shark in the top left can live for over 400 years. Chew worms and corals can live for thousands of years. And then there are some special glass sponges in the deep sea that are known to live for over 11,000 years. Think about how much has happened in that time, older than the pyramids, older than the wheel, one animal, these animals being alive for this huge length of time. And so what these characteristics mean is that these animals are so old and reproduce so slowly and grow so slowly that they don't deal well with change or impact. They really struggle to cope. And so this is important because it means our actions as humans really matter. So we know that even though the deep sea is out far from our sight and what we thought was far from our reach is just not true. On every single expedition that I've been on from the Antarctic to the Mariana Trench to the middle of the Atlantic Ocean, I find our trash everywhere we go there. And that's often in places that no one has ever been before. So you can see the top picture has got a rope wrapped in coral, plastic bags, bottles, you name it. And then more and more, we are using the deep sea as well as polluting it. So there's thoughts in the top right to begin mining the deep sea, which is going to be really, really bad for deep sea life if that begins. Then there's oil and gas extraction, fishing, and we now know that the deep sea is also experiencing the effects of climate change. So, the, I, but, you know, this is really important to know because we, the, the, essentially the planet cannot be healthy without a deep ocean. We know that the deep sea is massive, it's most of the planet. And that means that that ecosystem size has a huge responsibility that goes with it. We need it to be healthy because it plays a key role in lots of different ecosystem services that we rely on and all life relies on. So for instance, it helps regulate our climate by sequestering carbon. It helps cycle nutrients, it's linked to fisheries that many people, billions of people around the world rely on. It could potentially be a source of new medicine. It's a source of inspiration. There is so much that we benefit from the deep sea. And so even though we don't think it forms a lot of our life, a big part of our life, it does. We're interacting with the deep sea every single day. And so now I want to throw it to Andre for our closing video. Andre, if you'd be so kind. And you know, this video just shows some of the amazing life in the deep sea. And what I want you to take away from it is that the deep sea not only harbors amazing life, as you can see here, but it also is home to potentially valuable and important resources for us. And every time we go down into the deep sea, we're finding new species, new habitats, and it's really pushing the boundaries of what we thought life was able to do. And so many solutions to some of the greatest challenges could be found in the deep sea, but we just don't know yet. We need to keep looking. And so today, when you get home, uh, your job is to help me tell as many people as possible about the deep sea. I want you to go to your family, your friends, your teachers, your coaches, whatever, whoever, and tell them one thing you learned 
from the presentation today about how amazing the deep sea is. Because the more people that know about the deep sea, I hope there'll be the more people that care about the deep sea. So that's your job for today. And so with that, thank you so much, Andre. I am gonna end the presentation and we're gonna open up the floor. Let me put up my question slide just because it's cute. We are going to move into the question and answer scenario like the sea cucumber in the deep sea hair asking questions. Great, thank you so much, you guys. This has been wonderful. All these questions are absolutely wonderful, so thoughtful. We could stay here for the next day and still not have answered all the questions that have come in. So shout out to all of our amazing YouTubers and classrooms that have joined us online. You have made this an absolutely wonderful broadcast today. Thank you again to Diva and all the students and teachers watching. We hope you join many, many more of our events. Our next event for ages nine through 14 will be next Thursday, April 20th. Join explorer and filmmaker Sangeeta Ayer as she shares the challenges that elephants face and what they can teach us about empathy, resilience, and freedom. You definitely don't want to miss that. Ooh, that sounds great. It sounds really good, right? I've had the pleasure of meeting her and her passion and just learning so much about elephants. I was deeply engaged and I know you all will be too. So go ahead and register for this event and for more events at natgeoed.org backslash Explorer Classroom. You can request a chance to be featured on screen like you've seen our classes today. And fellow teachers, we've also created a new interactive guide for you to share with your students to take them on a learning journey with each of our special guests. Find the Explorer Mindset in Action Guide and Teacher Edition linked on each event registration page. Have a great day, everyone. And remember to stay curious and keep exploring. Bye for now. Thanks, everyone. Love your questions.